Hey YouTube, it's iPad Mac 67 and we're bringing you something just a little bit special. For those in Australia, Bathurst is the great race. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. For those overseas that may not have seen it, okay. it is an awesome race. I'm bringing you some of the crashes from the history of Bathurst. It doesn't include all the best crashes, but it certainly was enough good crashes here that people will remember. And I hope you enjoy, so please comment and subscribe and thank you guys. Going over skyline, Robert's car spins and crashes backwards down a steep slope. As I came over the blind approach to McPhillamy Park corner and a speed in excess of 100 miles an hour, a tyre burst on the car, causing it to veer straight ahead into the bank. And I was a bit worried, you know, for the crowd's sake, that the car would sort of jump the fence and end up in amongst the people. Oh, it was just crashing and glass breaking and banging and carrying on. When the car finally came to rest, I was still conscious and Tatus ran over and they started to tip the car up. Gagan and Doug Whiteford brush with spectacular results. And look, he's gone. Gibson's oh, rolling. Still going. Hey, look, that car's uh, just missed him. God, that was a fearful accident. Play. That's the first of the Toyotas. Looks oh, like Roger. 91. Bang, there's the next one. Straight edits. Car Torn 90. wheel off. Next one. Back head. Our cat, maybe oil on the road up there. He's trying to steer the thing. The wheel has run off the other Toyota, and Bowcat at this stage gets the shimmies on. And yeah, he's got one wheel. It's virtually right off. That's the 24 car, the Bajan Bowcat car in the background, the 91 Toyota, and there's another car here about to get collected. Oh, oh that's the Bob and Fangio car. Yeah. That's going to stop it completely. Even the pace car won't. Oh, yes, it will. There's room for it. Right, let's have a look at what happens. Here is the Hopwood car coming up. It's going to pull out and has drilled the Commodore right in the rear. And you can see what has happened. He's put himself around, and there goes the Commodore. He's trying to bring it back under control. He'll hit the wall on the right. Oh! And that's straight across to the left. And how on earth he has just missed. This is what happened on the exit to Forest Elbow. Brian Callahan. Barry Graham, the 39 car, spinning. Then triggered off is the Toyota Corolla. That's Bates and Bates, I think, in the Daily Planet car. And that, of course, uh, Andrew Harris with the brakes on. Now, uh, driver very quickly out of that. Uh, that was... Uh... This is uh, the kind of send-off, and I don't want to... Oh, no. Oh, oh no. I don't want to be unkind to Winfield and the Nissan team, but the punter's at the top of the oh, hill. This is the kind God. of send-off they wanted to see for the Nissan. Well... The Nissan's got in, Jim went in gingerly. Red flag is out. Oh no, just get out of that. Marshall will get hit if he doesn't get over the fence. Red flag is out, the race is over. Uh, young Brian Callahan. Oop, here's the Ooh. 76 car. That hit the wall, got into with a wash. Now he was quite okay, that is. Boy, and as boy. you can see, climbing out. Oh yeah. yeah. His leg against the roll bar. Very, very lucky boy. That on the replay, Alan Moffat was just pointing out the damage on the front of his Falcon there, just coming in the bottom of the screen. Now look at that, there's a collision. David Wayne Russell, car, yeah. John Trimble. Whoa! Whoa! That's Alan, Alan Jones. Jones! The car's on fire, stopped in the middle of the circuit. Goodness me, Alan Jones, oh. the race leader. That one is going to be in bad shape. Now they're going to have to get a hell of a lot more that, extinguishers down there to get that well, one under that control. fellow isn't going around the other side, and I don't blame him. He doesn't want to get onto the track. Especially the smoking. He's this. not the extinguisher is not doing the job that is going to really get moving. If he doesn't get around behind the tire, now he's just no. He he's to not going to do. He's going to get out of there. He better walk away from it. Yeah, that's he's... going to be a dangerous situation shortly. A Conrod straight. I don't know what's happened, but the they, car is ablaze. 301, the pack leader, Falcon. No, I think that's on that, the approach to the cutting, actually, Gary. It's on the way up to the cutting, sorry. Under oh, bonnet heat, Gary, is so immense in these cars. Uh, the John Bowers 17, Shell FAI Falcon. Richards goes right in front of him. Bowers' heart is in his mouth. He slides to the left. 
Leave me out of this, he says. Go away. And look at John glancing to the right. He doesn't even care where his falcons go. That looks uh, bad at home as we watch the replay very dramatically caught on our video disc. Can you imagine what would have happened if the sand trap hadn't been there? He would have uh, gone probably head first. He's a very lucky man to be able to walk straight back to the pits. He certainly is, Mike. That's a most spectacular accident. We've been uh, luckily fairly accident free. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Kevin oh, Butler, the oh, is over. Bartlett has gone. He's got Dick Johnson maybe into it. No, Dick got out of the way. But the back tyre is off. The back tyre. Oh, no. Oh, the car's after, gone. After passing the car and it spun at the top of the mountain coming down, just clips the wall. That is not a good place to be if anyone uh, was travelling very, very close to him at the time. So Peter Jansen has taken... Crash B, the unforgettable sight of Dickie Johnson carving out a falcon-sized shortcut to Lithgow right through the Mulgan. Here it is again. Dickie Johnson doing so much damage to the forest that year that Sting later wrote a song about it. Crash E involved just about everyone, but mostly Scott Tom Walkinshaw, who won the race in a Jaguar in 1985, but didn't fare nearly so well here in 84. As a Jaguar lover, certainly my favourite stack in the pack, but a sorry sight for lovers of the three-pointed star. Yeah, and let's face it, a lot of people really dig Mercs. See it from another angle now. And in fairness, point out that it's actually co-driver Andy Rouse at the wheel, not Brocky. Brocky was actually back in the pits picking out a new co-driver for next year. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Mr. K, it's... Replay, there's Brock, he's running wide, he's getting sideways. Dear, oh dear, he's heading toward the concrete wall from here. What has happened there? Massive loose, he's probably doing about 170 kilometres an hour there. Oh. And crunch! That is a big impact, a huge impact. As Brock loses it coming through Castrol Curve on the run up toward McPhillamy. And then, let's watch this again, Doug. Here he goes. This is, a, this is at race speed. Oh. Roach. Conrod straight on the extreme left-hand side of the road. The car gets all unstable. He tries to catch it, then it gets onto the grass. And once you get on the grass down there, you are history. Oh, I tell you what, he's got out of that pretty lightly, all things considered. That's the best save of today at Mount You reckon Panorama. that's not the ride of your life? That is the ultimate ride. 17, Dick John. On our Toyota replay of an incident that occurred up here. Larry Perkins. Pop! And Dirk, I think that's the number 18 Ford Sierra. Uh-oh. Uh he's got into the side of the Clearahan Mazda RX-7. Clearahan's heading out to the wall. He decides he's turning the other way. Oh, oh. my goodness me lumps of concrete flying everywhere knocked a big hole in the wall who we caught earlier on our toyota replay this is the lusty commodore getting out of shape and her runch up she goes down it comes it has not been the week for the lusty see exactly what happened oh launched it straight through the curb missed it completely creases it twice against the concrete wall Tim and Alf Grant, one more spot. Oh, that's shades of last year, isn't that bad? Like Dave Barrow. He's got... Have a look at what happened to the Russell oh. car. Holy smoke. Gee whiz. The trouble spot during the 1981 event. A touch between the Fords of Bob Morris and Christine Gibson produced sufficient congestion to in fact stop the race.